We're searching for answers. So we're gonna check in with the stars of Bravo's love broker, Lori Zaslow and Jen Zucker. Then we're gonna talk to the founder of Grouper, Michael Waxman. And then we're gonna talk to some everyday folks and hear about their ups and downs searching for love. Lori, Jen, let's start talking a little bit about why matchmaking really does play a role in people finding love today. It's really a status thing. You've, become, you've gotten yourself to a place in life. You're busy. You, you don't have time to go out and meet quality people. And what we do is we just save that time for you and we put those people that you're looking for in front of you. And with matchmaking, it's an acceptable way to meet people. And we do all the screening, all the vetting, and all the setting up. I'm sure if you speak to someone who does online dating, they're going by the preference the person says. The age, the height, the hobbies, the religious aspect. But ultimately, I like what you said about the advantage of having a human matchmaker versus a digital matchmaker. There's no algorithm for love, sweetie. So all these online things, give me a break. They're a great way to meet people, of course. But there's no specific algorithm that can guarantee love. Real love, lasting love is a process that grows. So lust at first sight, yes. I wanna bang you at first minute, yes. But love at first sight, no. Should matchmakers take a different approach to matchmaking when they're setting up a gay couple versus a straight couple? Just because someone's gay, they're looking for the exact same thing. Someone doesn't want a smoker. There's nothing to do with your sexual preference. So we work individually on the person and their needs. But ultimately, love is love. Love is love. Yeah, love is love. So what do millennials really think about online dating? Let's check in with Michael Waxman, the founder of Grouper, a website that transformed the way we find love online. Your company, Grouper, really seeks to redefine the world of online dating, doesn't it? Our members' experience is they log onto our site for just a few minutes but then the majority of their interaction with us is in the company of their friends and three people they were matched with at a bar or a lounge, having a good time. And again, you know, most of the people who use it are, are single, but you know, there aren't these labels of, oh, it's for dating, it's for networking, it's for finding friends. It's just a comfortable way to meet people, much in the same way a house party might be. With your company, do you think that millennials are changing their minds about what online dating is and, and really maybe looking at it from a different perspective? Humans are social creatures. We want to get together with each other. But, you know, let's focus on the, the meaty part of that, the meaningful part of that, actually getting together and not, you know, taking photos of it or, you know, making stats of it. Actually, like, connecting with each other. And so I think, you know, that is really what millennials and a lot of people in their 20s are, are looking for. And I think, you know, that's what, I, what we've done with the group. I have so many friends who met online who are now married happily and they met such wonderful, awesome companions and partners and I was like, this is going to work for me too. And it didn't <laughs> at all. It was a situation where I didn't know anybody in the city and was like, why not mm -hmm. try this online easier way to like meet girls without being the awkward lone guy at the bar. I used Match for a year, which was basically paying for unhappiness. Um, and then I went for the free route for OkCupid, and um, so then I just got free misery. I don't like paying for it, because that. I can get a girl outside on the street if I have to, but, you know, sure. And it, it works out either way. It makes me sound very particular, but really, you're meeting these people, and they're not what you expect them to be, and it's it's more awkward than going out with your friends. You're almost never gonna run into somebody on OkCupid and have, you know, no idea where they're coming from, what their story is. Like, you're gonna have some base knowledge whether you're gonna get along with this person or not. Once, I did meet a guy who seemed perfect. We had a great time. Uh, we were just on, it was like, 
poor timing. I think that we both just wanted different things. He wanted a really slow relationship where it built over time and we went on several dates and I was kind of like, okay, it's date number five. Like, why have you not tried to bang me yet? 60 I've gone on dates with, 40 I've probably had a second date or more, and then um, 17, literally 17, I've had sex with. Much better, I think, because I think that my friends are seeing me go out more again and like be like, oh, you seem a lot happier. <laughs> when I was going out on these dates, I'd be like, oh, I can't hang out. I'm going on this date with this guy who probably is a lame person, but maybe he's gonna be great. Okay, Cupid has provided, you know, more serious potential relationships than, you know, meeting people outside. <laughs> I haven't deleted my profile, uh, but I haven't visited. If something happens and I fall in love, then great. Whoop to do that worked, and I'm gonna get married. But like, I just don't give a shit. I'm having fun right now. I'm sure after this, there will be tons of men clamoring. Oh, hey, guess what? I just got a message on OK Cupid. <laughs> and she said, You look like a traveling man! Exclamation point. End message. <laughs> Of course online dating has its ups and downs, but the new and improved online dating is a hybrid between meeting on the internet and meeting in person. It's that combination that can spark true love. Hey, you never know.